This conference will now be recorded. Hello, can you able to hear me? Yes. Yes, Sandeep. Yeah, yeah, this is perfect now, thanks. Sorry for this confusion. Okay, uh, let's uh, start now. Let me just share my screen. Okay, just tell me if you can see my screen also, so that I can start. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yes. Okay. This is one of my old Windows mission that I just picked up for today's session, so that it would be only related to the uh, OS internals and how do we install the uh, Windows uh, Linux machines in the Windows. So that's a problem with that. Let me just minimize this. Okay, uh, fine. Uh, today we'll be discussing about the uh, basic OS internals. Like uh, as I told you, Linux is something very important for the understanding of. It. Just getting some noise. Yeah, uh, today we'll be discussing about the OS internals. Like I said, you Linux is something very important for the whole DevOps. Like if you want to understand, if you want to install any of the softwares like if you want to work with Jenkins or if you want to uh, deploy your workloads onto the cloud or anything. Uh, understanding the internals of the operating is very important. So we'll start this course with the uh, uh, install, installation of the GNU Linux and uh, basic administration of the Linux and understanding the uh, basic networking around the Linux and all that. So it would be a starting foundation for us. Later we can go into the cloud and even com the, the complete course, like if you want to install the Jenkins, you'll do that in the Linux. And if you want to use the Docker and if you want to create the containers that you do on the Linux. So understanding the uh, new Linux and the OS internals is very much important for this. Uh, course completely. So the first thing that I want you to do is uh, to install the uh, Linux operating system on your machines. Uh, if it is already something you are already using a Linux op mission, that's good then. Uh, you need not uh, have this kind of setup for you. But if you don't, if you have something Windows and if you want to install the uh, Linux on the Windows, you need to have these kind of setup. So for this, uh, I'm just taking uh, Ubuntu operating system and uh, I just downloaded that and I can install that on a virtual box. So before going into that, let's look into small things like what is an operating system and how do we need exactly what to understand on this operating system and all that. So if you see, uh, till now we have been hearing of uh, like operating systems and many kind of different operating systems and predominantly you've been using Windows on your desktops and even your, in your office workstations, you'll be using the Windows itself. If it is a Windows 7 or Windows 10 is Windows 10 and Windows 11 is very recent one. Windows 10 is something that you'll be using. All the other operating systems like uh, there is a Linux based operating system, Apple, if you're already using an iPhone or Mac OS, you'll be uh, coming across the Apple OS and the other ones like the Android is something if you're already using a mobile phone based on the Android, you'll be interacting with an Android OS. So this is what exactly a different kind of operating systems that we have in the market and we'll be using it. And if you see what exactly is an operating system, then you know it's a, a kind of uh, core software that generally runs on the hardware and it will be 
made usable to the user to interact with the hardware so that he can input something and he gets an output related to that and 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 uh, the use of the operating system also you're familiar like uh, since you've been already into the it firms you know that uh, operating system is the main user interface between the hardware and the user and it coordinates with all the hardware components for example if you have put a pen drive or if you have insert like if you have taken a mouse and you've been just using the wireless mouse or uh, usb mouse then the operating system is the main thing which interacts with that and which needs to give you whatever the desired output that you are using and it also gives you an environment for writing the programs or this software to function and a data management so that you can store your files and all that and it also monitors health and functionality and all these things so that is about the uh, what what exactly an os does and all that and uh, you have seen these kind of operating system mainly like if you are not used uh, linux till now you have been used uh, into the windows and we have seen windows 10 or windows 8 or 7 we have been using these things and uh, the only thing is it's a kind of uh, user based usage that you have used whether you write a code into that or you only uh, do a normal administration like uh, installing certain softwares whatever you want you just google out them and you take an exe file and just install it for you for example if you're writing a code you use a vs code or uh, for example for the java like eclipse or something you just uh, pull down that you install that you try to write the programs and uh, compile them and run that so these are the normal use cases or watching the movies or uh, social media or anything that you do from the browser and all that so for this uh, to understand more internals of it generally windows uh, uh, I, I don't think so you you may have done the administration of the windows like getting into in details of windows and trying to administrate them and uh, like adding more users or uh, if you have used it any windows server in a company you you know more details of it but here uh, in this course we need to know about more about the linux like what is an uh, what is a linux operating system and why it is used and why not windows and uh, uh, like what is an server and all those kind of details that you get very regularly so that's the reason you need to install the linux operating system uh, you need to be aware of basic administration in the linux like i'll show you how do you run the shell commands and what is a shell and uh, why do you run the shell commands and how do you install the packages in the linux for example if you want to install any firefox in the linux or uh, it could be an apache web server that you want to install in the linux all these things we need to discuss and also some parts of user management like how do you in add users in the linux and uh, all this kind of file management like how do you add directories in the linux and all that it's not only the front end that we see always like uh, i just uh, in the front end we'll have a file browser where we'll go and add the use add the files and add the directories and all these things but when you're dealing with the servers like if you have a cloud and if you install any virtual machines in the cloud you don't get a kind of front end where you have the user interface to interact with that and you do the uh, all the kind of activities that you want to do it's a kind of completely a, a shell a command line interface uh, where you generally run the commands to do whatever you want whether you want to automate the stuff whether you want to install any packages if you want to uh, add the users or do all the stuff all the things you do via the command line so that is a main intention of this uh, basics of os internals that you need to understand all this maybe uh, some people already knew this maybe they could have already uh, encountered with the linux os and they have installed a few servers into that and all that but uh, for, for the course to have the common ground we all need to understand the complete os internals and all this so for, for generally if i want to install any linux uh, in, into my mission first thing i need to do is if I have a laptop, I can directly uh, take the ISO file and convert into a pen drive uh, bootable and I can just put it that and I can restart the mission and boot it from the pen drive and install the complete operating system. Uh, but for convenience sake, uh, since you are already having a Windows mission and uh, you if you just want to install the Linux on the Windows also, you have multiple options that you can do it. So one thing is uh, going into the uh, this uh, store where you directly can search for uh, Ubuntu so ubuntu is an operating system a very famous one uh, which is a uh, linux based operating system we'll come into different kind of linux based operating systems why you you will have more so in the windows you could have only heard that but in the linux world uh, it's completely different like uh, there are uh, like the thousands of operating systems based on the linux uh, android is one of them that you use in your mobiles and 
uh, there are multiple multiple use case based operating system in the linux i'll tell you why it is and how we can uh, how we can differentiate between the different operating system in the linux and all that so for for now you can just go here uh, if you search for the ubuntu you'll have the two kind of choices one is 18.4 uh, which is a 2018 april release and 20.4 which is a 2020 april release so you can choose anyone uh, it's uh, it's no problem because uh, the, all the packages will be the same for any of the operating system so bear with me it would be a bit slow i think so to get all those things so now you have this if you just install it here uh, so windows has certain thing called embedded linux so it will install the windows it will install the linux on the top of windows it's a kind of uh, ubuntu terminal van where you can run the all the utilities like uh, connecting to the servers or running the basic commands or executing the shell scripts but it's only a kind of limited what uh, exactly the linux operating system gives you because it's a kind of embedded one it's again uh, built upon the windows itself so you have uh, some problems with that it's not a complete uh, linux operating like complete based of linux where you can do everything on this so you have certain limitations so for now you can also choose this one when you click on that it will uh, download for you it takes it may take 10 minutes for you to completely download that and uh, there you can start using it let's come to this part later or you can do one more thing whether you can in, you install something called virtual box so if you go to the virtualbox.org then you can see that uh, like uh, this is an oracle virtual box where you can create a vms upon the windows operating system and in the vs vms you can start installing the uh, linux so here i'll go to the download section so let me see if i already have that okay i don't have a virtual box so here you have a choice which host you are want to install this one so currently i'm using the linux windows box right so i can just take the windows and i can just save this file a exe file and once it is downloaded i can just uh, install that it is uh, very much pretty straightforward where you just need to uh, click on the next to install the complete uh, software here so let me just install this so once this is uh, this is installed you need to have the linux uh, install this so once you have the uh, virtual box ready then you need to have a uh, linux iso so that you can create a virtual box and install in it so uh, there are multiple options where you can choose this one uh, so one thing is ubuntu which is uh, which is a better for the starters like if you're just starting to uh, glance the linux and start uh, this is the best operating system even like the, the there is a complete feature rich operating system this is and you can just download it but it's very heavy like if you see uh, i just downloaded it it got two gigs of uh, uh, 2.7 gigs of iso so it's a kind of very heavy so for that uh, you can either go to different kind of operating systems like centos and all that like if you see there are multiple choice for an operating system in linux you can choose centos or you can choose uh, uh, debian so if you see this is a debian based uh, operating system so if you come to the we call it as gnu linux operating systems so these are all uses a kernel called linux so that is a major difference between uh, different operating systems so if you take windows it uses a different kind of kernel so kernel is something which is in heart of the operating system it's a main component of the operating system which talks to the hardware which talks to uh, memory management and all the components and it is a main primary component for the operating system to work so all the operate like linux based operating system we call it as a gnu linux where linux would be the kernel and gnu is kind of applications that we use like firefox is one of the application and the vs code is one of the application eclipse is one of the application and all these things right so uh, gnu is based related to the applications and linux is a kernel so you have uh, many choices in this uh, gnu linux so you can have a something called debian based operating systems uh, you can have uh, red hat based operating systems and you can have a gentoo based operating system so there are many different flavors in this and uh, even for the ubuntu uh, debian based you, you again have something called ubuntu 
and for the red hat you have something called centos and like this so what differentiate these operating systems is a package manager that we use so how do you install a package in debian differs from the red hat how do you install a package in red hat is different from the gentoo so the package is something like if you want to install the vlc player in the ubuntu it's a different kind of mechanism what kind of command that you use what kind of packaging that it does is very different from vlc in the centos or 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 even the apache or a tomcat or different things so we'll come into these things uh, later on but if you go to this particular website like you have something called distro watch so where you can see a many kind of operating systems let me just google that out So it gives you the complete uh, different kind of operating systems that is there in the Linux. Uh, you can choose whatever you want. It doesn't really matter because all the things, the kernel will be the same. So the kernel is only the Linux. That's the reason uh, all the commands will be same across all the different operating systems. So if I go and see, like if I want to look into the files that are there in the Debian operating system, I run the same command that is LS. Uh, even if it is on the Red Hat, I do the same things. So this is a website which gives you like many details of kind of operating systems that are in the market and all that and generally uh, they create operating systems based on the usage so let's suppose someone is uh, completely related to the sci scientific technologies and they want to use uh, different kind of softwares that are related more into these kind of domain then they can use choose this one or if you are uh, completely a gamer who wants uh, uh, a linux operating system where it runs only on the games and all that you can choose based on that one or if you are uh, a, a person like if you're just trying to set up a, a, a in particular use case of a server like if you want to set up only the db uh, server in a, a db based linux uh, mission then you can just take only that kind of operating system but predominantly the people will be using the mint and ubuntu debian these are all the very famous ones for a desktop users like you can just take ubuntu and you can happily install that you get everything what windows gives you and uh, and uh, and linux operating systems has a major advantage when you compare with the windows like uh, there are completely uh, virus free uh, you don't see any virus in the window, uh, linux that's the reason you run around uh, 15 to 20 years also like 15 years or so there is no problem you can just run the uh, operating system on the server and you can just update the patches and everything without even rebooting and uh, everything is very secure like in the linux you don't find anything related to the uh, malware or a kind of virus which uh, which can run on which can take down your system that's a major advantage of the linux that's the reason it's a a very good choice of having this so that you need not uh, always try to have the antivirus and all those things on your mission and one more thing is uh, it's completely secure the way it built the kernel is built is very much secure and uh, and, the, and if you see this kernel it has like uh, millions of lines of codes linux kernel and people will be like the whole community will be maintaining it's not by a single company uh, there'll be like a lot of people the community based uh, guys will be maintaining all this so all the patches and everything will be properly maintained and they take care of each and everything they scrutinize the thing and they will upload the things so that even on your server if you want to install a package or patch it doesn't literally uh, create any problem to your server so that is main important thing and uh, all this Linux is in, uh, free and open source, we call it as free, not in the terms of uh, money, but in the terms of uh, code that you can see, like you can completely open the kernel code uh, that is a Linux kernel code and you can see what are the components in this and how it exactly works and all that. But in Windows, you don't have that kind of uh, flexibility. The, I can't go to the Windows kernel and I can't see the code of it or I can't develop something for the Windows. It's completely a Microsoft based one. Uh, you can't have any control over that. But in the Linux, you will completely have the control. I can show you the uh, complete kernel code and what kind of uh, things are there in the kernel where you can start developing your own uh, operating system also. Let's suppose you are a company uh, which is based on a completely one particular use case like the mail server or something where you can just take the Linux kernel and on the top of it, you can build your own applications. Like if you, you can just uh, uh, streamline the operating system only for one particular purpose. Like you need not have all the uh, kind of software that you want on the operating system so that it comes very less like you can just create an, a linux operating system in 100 mb or something uh, and you can just use it for everywhere like it, it exactly works as an intended so that's a good thing about linux and it's a 
and uh, and and you have all these packages and everything for the linux and a community maintains this uh, like even you can be a part of it in taking up a particular package and developing for the linux so that that's a, that's a good thing about GNU linux operating systems and even uh, if you take off the mac or mac is also based on uh, similar lines of unix but again it's a completely uh, closed one not an open source one uh, like uh, apple maintains all the things and all the packages and everything but in the linux it's a completely communities and the normal people can start maintaining all the packages on this so for our convenience in this course i will take up the ubuntu you can just go and download the ubuntu or you can see the better uh, one like if you come here and one more thing a good good thing about the linux it, it supports almost all the hardwares like uh, in our laptops generally we use x uh, x64 but if you see uh, there are raspberry pi or iot devices and all the routers and different kind of devices right even those things are completely maintained by the uh, like you can just download the is4 related to that and install on that and uh, one more example about the gnu linux is android like if you see all the mobiles which run on the android is nothing but a linux based operating systems so uh, it again runs the kernel as a linux so you can install a, a shell in that and you can run the commands even for uh, doing a mobile calls or anything so that's a fun activity that you can just go with the android go to the play store and download a shell uh, command line interpreter and you can start doing any things in the in this because again it's built completely on the linux operating like the linux kernel so here uh, one thing you can choose firstly is first you need to go and install the virtual box uh, next you need to install any of your choice operating system that really doesn't matter for this course even like uh, the complete course you can choose any of the operating system which is a lesser uh, uh, lesser size of what you can like if you have the problems with the internet you can just go with the uh, debian based operating systems also now if you come to the debian here you have a net installable cd which is very uh, very less 150 to 280 mb or you have the full set something like this so you can just go here and you can choose amd64 for your laptop so once this virtual box is downloaded uh, let's see that and you also have one more uh, choice also i'll tell you once i'll show you the virtual box so this is the interface of the virtual box first you need to create a vm so in the windows itself i'm trying to create a vm so let me see if this is done this is still pending okay if you click on this uh, and if you choose the uh, is for that i just downloaded okay let me just first create one so uh, for first uh, new click on the new and you want to create a, like ubuntu or something like this ubuntu os so that is the virtual box name that i'm just giving so this you can consider as a, a kind of virtual uh, virtual mission manager where you just create the virtual missions so you just click on the new uh, name it as whatever you want like it could be a linux os or something and now you can choose it's a linux and it's a ubuntu 64 bit that i'm choosing so if you are choosing a debian based you can just choose a debian if you are using a gen 2 or fedora or, or different kind of things or if you don't know anything you can just choose uh, linux 2.464 bit so it will happily do all the things so now uh, since i already have the ubuntu iso with me i'll choose an ubuntu so here i need to give the uh, ram size that is a memory size that we have so it is like creating a normal cpu itself like what you have in the cpu like ram uh, uh, and the processor and a hard disk and all those things right you choose all the options based on that now you have the memory size of one gigs so i just choose it and hard disk it will just create a virtual disk now uh, i'll just choose go with the options that is already there and a vdi so just remember that while you are giving the memory it should not exceed something what your system has so if your if your laptop is 16 gigs of something you go you don't choose uh, more than that or you don't go closer to that because that will consume all the memory for you so just go with the 1 gb or something like that that's right and next you go with the vdi uh, and this is like this is related to the hard disk like it creates a virtual hard disk and attached to your virtual machine so just go on giving all these details and just create that so once that is done uh, this is the vm that is created and you can create multiple vms let's suppose if i want to install the uh, debian also i'll just click on this i'll choose a debian uh, linux and again i'll go with the same options like i'll give one gb one gb of ram and i'll just choose all the things and just create here so 
once you click on this, you'll get all the details of this virtual mission. So if you see, uh, this is the name that you have gave. This is a, a one GB of RAM that you're using or a base memory or, or like the main memory. And if you see the display and all these things, which comes as a default one, you need not choose any of these details. So the only thing that you give is, you, you literally can choose all the default one. You need not change any of the options in this. So once this is done, you just double click on this and then you'll get an interface where you need to choose an IS4, which you have already downloaded. So if I go to go back to my Firefox here, I've downloaded the uh, Ubuntu here. If I go to the Ubuntu website and the downloads, uh, and I can just, uh, just go to the Ubuntu website here and go to the download section where you'll see the Ubuntu desktop and all that. So once you click on the Ubuntu desktop, it gives you a choice of uh, like 20.4 or at, uh, even 21.4 is a new one, like uh, on the uh, few months back in the April, it has been released. So Ubuntu maintains this kind of cycle. So if you see uh, 20.4, 2.0, it's a uh, 2020, uh, the 4th April and the second week and some may minor kind of versions that they give. If you just click on uh, download and you also see these kind of requirements here, uh, even the two, uh, like the older laptops also is happily, you can install this. And if you find, if you want another kind of uh, different based uh, uh, alternate downloads, you can click on this and you can choose a different kind of ones. So the network installer comes with a very lesser size, like it could be a 200 MB or something like that. And you can choose different uh, versions also, like you can choose the 2018 uh, April released LTS. So we call this as LTS. LTS is a kind of long-term support what Ubuntu gives you, like around three to four years, they'll release all the packages and everything. Later on, you need to update that. Uh, it's a simple single command line where you go from 20.4 to 21.4. So now let's go back to here. So creating a virtual process. Maybe it's taking time. Okay, let's come to this part later again. So uh, again, like you can download whatever you want here and let's go to other presentations that I have. Maybe creating the process for the virtual machine. It's taking some time. Okay, let me go back to this uh, presentation again. Okay, we have just seen the evolution of the Windows or how the Linux operating systems are there and what are the different Linux operating systems that you have. And if you see, uh, I've been telling you about Linux kernel, kernel and all these particular words, right? So this is a Linux kernel where it exactly sits in the operating system. So all the applications and process, for example, if I'm accessing a Firefox also, so in the Linux kernel, there should be a management where it should give the memory to the Firefox, where should it should have the process ID for the Firefox and all that. That is how you should, uh, will be running that. Okay, this is a Windows operating system, but if you do the same thing on the Linux operating system also, this is how the allocation happens. So Linux kernel sits somewhere here, it will talk between the process or the applications and with the memory, CPU and all the devices and all these things. So it's a kind of core of the uh, op operating system which will does all the management. And uh, you'll also have the same kind of things. Even the Windows will have a kernel. Uh, or even the Mac OS will have a kernel. So if you see the kernel of the Mac OS will be something called Darwin. And uh, the kind of architecture could be very different. Linux kernel is co completely related to the monolithic kernel, we call it as it's a big bundle which comes with the, all the things and the uh, kind of RPC, uh, the communication happens over the RPC and all these things. And if you take the Mac OS kernel that is a Darwin, it's a kind of different architecture. It's, a, uh, it's not the monolithic. Okay, this kind of differences will be there if you look into the kernel. And uh, we can also see that here also, like if you just go to any of the images of the Linux kernel. So this is how it exactly, I just want to show you the better picture. Okay, this is how it sits and it, it looks into the all the hardware components and the process management and it does all the stuff. So, or this one. So. Uh, it does the system calls and it does all the things which in the user space we do. So user space is something where we do the all the activities like the accessing the Firefox or writing the code or running the VS code or watching the movies or everything. So the kernel is something which takes the inputs from that and which talks to the hardware and which talks to the uh, process management or the memory management and all those things and it does the stuff. So I'll just show you all those things. Uh, let me just see what happened, what's happening here. So it's not able to 
sorry, this let me cancel that and run again. Is somehow stuck. Let me open that again and try. It should not take this much amount of time. It should just come up. Maybe the issue with my Windows machine. Open this one also. Let me just create a new one. So if uh, normally you can also increase the RAM size and everything here also, you can just go to any of the uh, VM that you have already created. You can go to the settings and you can just uh, increase the memory also. Like you can just go to the system here and you can just increase the memory on fly and you can just save that. Uh, let me just run this. I just gave more memory to that so that uh, it can start up. Yeah, that's a problem. One GB is not sufficient for this uh, Windows. So uh, for this Ubuntu OS, now I choose an IS4 that I have just installed. So let me go to the downloads. So Ubuntu IS4 just downloaded. Now I can choose that. Sorry. Okay. This is I just choose the. Uh, yes, for that I've just uh, downloaded. I'll choose this one. I'll just click on the start. So you can increase the size and all that. You can just go to uh, full screen mode or you can go to a better uh, adjust for the window size and all that. It gives you all, like once the OS installed, it's, it gives you all those different options that you can choose. Actually, in this course, I'll directly use my Linux machine. Like I do have the dual uh, dual boot, like where I install both the Linux and Windows. So only for this uh, today's session, I came to this Windows so that I can show you the installation part in the Windows. Or you can have another choice also, like you can go to this particular website called uh, uh, osboxes.org. And if you go here, you can just choose images for virtual box images, and you can directly install the uh, operating system image that you want. So you need not do this installation part if you don't. Uh, if you, so for example, here I'm trying to do all the installation part, right? If you if you're once you have done that installation part and the next time if you want to set up a two VMs or the three VMs of the similar thing, like you can just come here. You can uh, go for the any operating system, the choice of our operating system that you want. So I'll go to where's Ubuntu. I'll just go back. Okay, there is Ubuntu. Like I can just take Ubuntu uh, VDI image, we call it as. I can directly import this image onto the virtual box. I'll also download this one. So two gigs is the size. Let me see the better one. So 16.6, .6, okay. Uh, 
Okay, meanwhile, uh, let me just go to this again installation section where I just left. Okay. So these are all uh, operating systems of the live. Uh, they have the live feature where you can just download the ISO and once you run on the VM, firstly, without installation itself, it gives you all the details. Like it will, it, like you can, where you can even use it. It only runs on your uh, main memory that is a RAM. Once you close it, it all the data also will be lost. But you can either install it or you can, you can just run as a live and just move away. So it's a kind of option that almost all the uh, Linux gives you. So here I didn't install any operating system. It's just trying to boot onto the desktop and where I can start using this operating system. Or uh, I'll also have this installation feature once this completely thing is booted, yeah. And I can just close it and use it as, as normal uh, operating system also. I can try Ubuntu or I can install Ubuntu. Try Ubuntu is where you see all the options like where you can go to the Firefox or where you can see all the startup options, what kind of software it gave and all that. Here in this course, we'll try to install the Ubuntu, which is required. Or you can choose anything, like you can choose a Debian or anything. And if you find any difficulties in installing one particular operating system, you can just ask me in the next class. I can help you out in whatever the error that you got. Okay, this is a very normal, like it's a normal setup where it just asks you about the keyboard layouts and your usernames, passwords, and how exactly you normally set up your mobile phone once you uh, uh, take a new one and you switch it on and give all the details, right? The email address and all those. Uh, it, it's the same thing. It's a normal installation and it just gives you those options. You just need to choose that. And once you click on the install, then everything is done. Like all, all the things are installed. You need not. Uh, or do any any other stuff like once you, it it will just give it will just install everything in 10 to 15 minutes for you if your ram is more if you are choosing a dual boot or something uh, it does more faster like since it's a vm and we have only 2 gigs of ram here it, it's it's a bit slow here so i need to remove this option so that it would be faster I don't want to download the updates while installing the Ubuntu so that it doesn't consume my network. And okay, here is you can uh, see uh, if you are doing this in the virtual machine, then you choose this option like here is a disk and install the Ubuntu. If it is not the uh, way that I'm doing, if you're trying to do a dual boot in your laptop, never choose this option. You need to uh, choose a different one, something else, and you need to format one of the disk in your windows and you need to install on that. Just remember this. Never attempt to try to completely erase that and install because it will completely erase all the windows partitions also. So this is not uh, something intended while installing. So if you're planning for the dual boot, go for something else. And uh, uh, there is uh, in the windows you have C, D, E, F, right? You completely format F drive or something you try to install on that particular drive, okay? That's uh, how you need to do the partitions. If you're not careful with the partitions, generally you'll wipe out all your data. So here I'll just give something you can just, so it's a normal uh, uh, like username that you want to log into your mission. So that's it, it's a very normal steps that you need to do. Uh, choose a partition and choose the language and all that. And once that is done, uh, Ubuntu gets installed in uh, 10 to 15 minutes, it, uh, it does all the stuff. So that's fast it is, like it's a normal, as I said, you it's a kind of a mobile setup that you do for a new mobile, just give all the details and it's it's ready for you. So that's how the installation of Ubuntu will be there. You just need to give some time to come, uh, to come up all these things. Uh, let's go to the other things. Uh, let me see if this is installed. Okay, it's still taking the time. So once this particular thing is installed, that's an embedded Ubuntu. Then once it is installed, you can directly go here and you can choose Ubuntu. Uh, and it gives you uh, a directly Ubuntu a shell where you can start using it. Okay, if it is installed, I'll show you now. Or if not, uh, if it takes more time, I can show you tomorrow also. But this will be done for now. So let's go back to the slides here. So 
that is about the kernel and uh, you can think uh, like we can just come to an analogy like how to understand the more de details related to the kernel what is the kernel and all that so you can just imagine as a librarian so if you have a very big library where people will come and take the different kind of books and where they have the workstations of uh, like uh, computers where they can access them and all that so linux kernel is something like a librarian so what librarian does like he'll give the cards to the students and he'll uh, give the books to the students he'll maintain some kit a catalog uh, to which student what kind of books he has given and later he collects them off and again stores the books in so that others can use it and all these kind of things right so exactly the kernel also works like this so if a if a process wants some memory if a process wants some space or if a process wants some uh, like one particular thread or something it does all the stuff uh, exactly like librarian and where they can start using that and so uh, if if you process want a cpu or if something to, uh, any co cores of the cpu or the threads of the cpu or in, like the memory from the ram and all these things the linux will take care and uh, predominantly if you see the linux has these functions like uh, linux does a memory management a process management a device drivers like if you put a pen drive you need to access the files in the pen drive or if you put a hard drive you need to access the uh, files in the hard drive right uh, the kernel does all the things for you and it also does the system calls and the security part like uh, like you have in the linux we have uh, the security like there will be normal users there will be the root users who does the main stuff and all that i'll show you all these things once we get this uh, linux get installed like i'll show you how do you go to the root user or a normal user how do you create the users and all that how do you manage the memory or the process like how do you check what are the process running in your mission like in the windows you have something called a task or services.msc right where you can see all the process in the same way in the linux also you'll have a different kind of mechanisms where you can look into all these things i will get into those details and it's a monolithic kernel and it's a completely modular where you can uh, completely develop the modules for the linux for example uh, if a new iot device came uh, which is a uh, like a webcams or something if linux wants to support that the people write modules for that uh, for a new company that came let's let's suppose samsung has developed a new device that needs a device drivers so in the linux kernel they will start writing something a drivers for that or a modules for that where it can implement and uh, do the things so it's a completely monolithic like you have a different kind of kernels like if you if i just go back here and you have a monolithic kernel a micro kernels and all that so that is out of scope of this uh, generally this is not the linux course that we will not go into those much details of differences between them but just for the reference i'm telling you uh, there are a different kind of kernels that we can see and uh, so this is how the differences will be there in the monolithic is a completely jam-packed and micro kernel is something which where all the things are divided so you can think in the same way of monolithic applications and microservices we call it as containers and dockers and kubernetes right so micro kernel is implemented in that way where it has all the segregations and all that a monolithic is something which is a completely uh, one kind of uh, uh, and you have the system calls and all these things in one one particular kernel so there is a differences between them how the things will be there but as i told you this is not yet something where we learn about kernel and deeper things about the linux uh, we can just leave it if you are interested you can just go through that but uh, this is how the linux kernel will be there and let's see what happened to this okay i just want to show you the basic cells and all that so i want this one to be set up here Okay, uh, meanwhile, we can also go through other slides also. And uh, yeah, so in the Linux, you have two things. One is the user space, one is the kernel space. This is very important. Like all the uh, kernel related ones and all the things which are related to the kernels, like managing the device drivers and the hardware and the memory management and all the things will be done in the kernel space. And the user space is something where you access the applications. Let's suppose if you are watching a movie in the Netflix, 
it, you open the Firefox and run the Netflix and watch the movie. So that is completely run in user space where you use the application. Or if you're compiling a, a Java code or something, you open an Eclipse and you start writing the code and run the integration tests and all that, that is completely done in the user space. But once it's interacting with the compiler and when it is, once it is running all the things for you, it will again interact with the kernel space and it does the stuff. So it, this is not something you see in the windows, but uh, in the Linux, it's very clearly evident what is the user space and kernel space. So user space is something, uh, again, if you are creating certain users, like let's suppose you have the Linux server and you create more users into that, like so that the people can access that and start working on that. They don't have access to the kernel space. So these, unless they have the root access or a super user permissions, they can't access this kernel space. That is how uh, the security is maintained in the Linux. They can only do the smaller things which are there in the user space and they can't delete anything related to the kernel space or they can't manipulate with the operating system. So that's the reason they have completely divided into, into the user space and the kernel space and all that. We'll also look into that once we get the Linux uh, up and running. And if you see Thank all you, the user space, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Can you please little slow down, please? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, no problem. Yeah. Uh, fine. Uh, like, let's come to again this user space uh, where, as I said, you you run the applications and all that. So you can imagine as a C Java programs that you run on the uh, user space and all that. And uh, in the kernel space again, as I said, you you have the device drivers. Like if you have put your webcam or uh, or any USB drives or the Bluetooth keyboard or anything, uh, it, it relates to the device drivers and kernel wants to talk to that new device that you have just connected and they, they, so that it can, it can give the user to interact with the device and all that, right? So that's the reason uh, these are all the things that runs in the kernel space itself. So it could be a device drivers, it could be a process management, it could be a, a user management or anything that you want to do, you do in the kernel itself kernel space so how do you interact with the kernel spaces again via different applications and different use cases and all that so let's suppose uh, you have just uh, connected any usb drive then if you want to access and if you want to access any a particular file on that usb drive or if you want to create any folder in that uh, external hard disk that you have connected then you do a something called system call uh, then the kernel connects to that particular uh, usb drive or a particular external hard drive and it starts doing the things like opening a file, writing the writing to a file or any of these things. So this is how it works. We call it as uh, system calls inter in the internals of the operating system. So this is something very much important. Like you can think uh, why I need to understand the core internals of the Linux and all that. But uh, once you are entering into the space of infrastructure automation, where you need to uh, uh, write the Ansible playbooks or where you want to write the Terraform code for creating the infrastructure in the AWS cloud or anything. Having the Linux fundamentals is very, very important because uh, you want to configure the Linux to uh, run your application. If it is a Tomcat, you want to configure the uh, uh, Tomcat based options or if you're running a web logic or if you're running any kind of machine learning algorithms or anything, uh, any, any, any particular software, you need to understand how it runs on the Linux, how the Linux interacts with that and how that uh, how you can because as i told you in the server if you are installing any vms in the aws cloud or azure or anywhere you don't see any user interface where you can go and click on the task list or something where you can delete them all the things that you need to interact with is with the shell itself so first two to three days we'll completely dig into the linux where i'll show you the shell where you can add the users where you can look into the process where you can kill the process and uh, and where you can install the packages and all that. Like uh, I'll also show you how to install the smaller packages like uh, a web server, Apache, where does the configuration files uh, store and all these things. So that's a very important thing that before going into the, uh, any, any kind of, uh, even if it's a Docker or Kubernetes, understanding the Linux is very important. So even if you want to Dockerize an application, uh, you write a Docker file, right? Even for that also, you need the Linux internals because e even if it is a developer also, who uses a Docker, he needs to understand certain things, how to install the packages on the Linux. So, so it's very vital and very important how good you are with the fundamentals. It depends how good you understand these things, you do a better automation in the DevOps. So that's the reason we'll go into in details of all these things and uh, I'll show you all these, how, how exactly you interact in a shell once the Ubuntu is up. So it's still taking some time.
So tomorrow I'll directly jump into my Linux mission. Uh, we don't have these kind of uh, uh, waiting time for any uh, any software to up and run. So now again, uh, okay, let me just go back here. Okay, this is, we are talking about applications, how they interact with the kernel and how this interacts with the hardware. In the similar way, uh, these are all the system calls. Like if you try to open your file, it runs an open function. If you try to close your file, it, 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 it runs a close function and all this. So these are all a kind of system calls, which is internal to the kernel, like what kernel does. So uh, it need, you need not understand all these internals, like how exactly these system calls works, because you don't, we don't involve at this level to automate anything or something like that. But it's very good to have uh, if you're writing a shell scripts for any automation tasks in your companies. So uh, I'm just waiting for this Ubuntu to come up so that I can show you all the things that we have just discussed. I can show you the kernel and all that. I think but, Sandeep sir, in nutshell, I think today class is uh, how to install Linux on the Windows operating system, correct? Yeah, yeah, that today I'm just uh, concentrating yeah, yeah. on at, that. At least, at least if you know the detailed steps, we'll try to install the uh, yeah, yeah. Linux on or Windows operating system. Yeah, so that is what main intention really, tomorrow. Yeah you should be able to uh, come up with a, a mission which you have already Linux installed. So we'll start from there, like uh, we'll go into the basic commands and all that. Let me also show you this option. Like I told you about OS boxes, right? Let me try that. I think so this is already installed, 16.4. Let me do input appliance or let me first unzip that. So I need to have a software which does this. Okay, I have the seven zip here. Extract files, download. So okay, that it will try to get it for you while you're downloading the OS box in the here. So try to see the 64 bit one. Maybe I choose the 32 bit, I think so. Sandeep, this is because your than, is already on 60. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, so. Installing uh, Linux from OS box is more quicker than uh, normal. Doing this, yeah, exactly. So uh, let's suppose if you want to set up two or three VMs also, or you need not go into all these steps. You can directly yeah. pull that VDI and install that. So that's a major advantage that we have here. Uh, so that even you can so we can it create the clone, clone right if we need yeah, to clone is also there. Yeah. but uh, yeah clone is also there the clone is also one of the good option but uh, mm -hmm. if you have already done certain things let's suppose you have already used uh, this os to install the docker or a jenkins and something went wrong mm -hmm. uh, it would be difficult for you again to if you don't create a snapshot actually for this virtual box you have something called snapshots so i can right. just Right click on this and uh, I can just click a snapshot which will exactly take the snapshot of that particular state that you have this VM. Uh, you can do that and uh, if you are, uh, if you are, you can, yeah, the clone is also a good option, like you can just clone it, but uh, these all, if you don't want to install all these things, then you just need to choose this. The only, uh, that is advantage that you have if you go to the yeah. OS boxes, yeah. So why is it is just to uh, uh, utilize the time? Yeah, that's it. So instead of uh, sitting for this long to have these all options, you can directly say, take the voice box and you can do that. So here you can choose that one. You can import appliance, I think. So let me just check. So if you click on import appliance and if you go to that, uh, let me see what exactly it came up. I never tried it out, uh, this voice oh, box. It? Okay. Uh, no, you can uh, uh, use the same method. Uh, you don't have to do uh, import. Okay, I can choose here the voice box, I think, so, right? Right. Directly. Right. Okay. So it's if an OV, OVF, then you need to choose that kind of things, I think, mm. so. There is nothing, and it started three. I think it is still downloading or what? Maybe it didn't properly download, but. Uh, this is the one GB is already done. Okay. 
I can just import directly, I think so. I can choose a VDA. Uh, there it is. Let me just check where this OVA. It's only allowing OVA and OVF. Uh, yeah. How to import the VDA. So we box it opens from here. Okay, I'll just look into this option. I never tried it out, but I see that this is a very best option, and we, we can just look into that. We can just Google out uh, how exactly you want to install it on a, a virtual box. So that you can just see uh, here later, like maybe. Uh, I just chose the wrong image or uh, I just don't know the option how exactly I can pull that down. Uh, but uh, this is something you can just write out. Uh, uh, and, if, and if you find it difficult, you can, I'll just write out uh, tomorrow and I'll come up with that. But this is the best way, uh, like one of the way that you can see if you don't know the installation, you can just start with that. But I don't see uh, anything prominent here that you, uh, uh, like you learn from this. So it's a very normal way where you just give your user credentials and down uh, install this complete Ubuntu. You can directly choose that OS boxes. That's the best option. Uh, I'll also look into that and I'll come back to you tomorrow again. Okay? So, so that's all for today. Uh, yeah, tell me. If you have one question here. Uh, so, uh, uh, so are you trying to establish any bridge connection uh, between uh, host and uh, uh, guest operating system here, or how you want to um, do the networking? I'll go with the default one. You need not uh, think of the networking. The network bridge, what normally it gives you, uh, mm -hmm. you'll get all the internet in that. Uh, you will be able to connect from your local mission to this VM uh, via SSH and all that. I okay, don't think so. You need not go in internals of the networking part here. It gives yeah, you but, all the uh, If you have multiple uh, uh, VDAs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so then if you want to uh, interconnect them, how do you prefer? Okay, then you have multiple options like uh, in the network instead of the NAT, you can generally NAT is something uh, where you can, uh, it gets internet and from the host, you can directly connect to these machines. Yeah. You can attach multiple adapters here. Like you can just, uh, uh, once it is turned off, you can see all those adapters. Let me just check okay. here. So you have the bridged adapter and all those things. Like uh, you can choose another adapter. Like if it is a uh, bridged adapter, then you can uh, like these VMs talk to each other. So mm -hmm. you have a different kind of uh, cho choices here. So you can just go to two choices. One is a NAT, one is a bridged adapter. If you want these VMs to talk to each other and if you want uh, a, a, some setup kind of master slave setup for Jenkins or something, uh, right. we'll get into these details later in the course. Like uh, once we go with the other things, uh, once you're comfortable with the virtual box and all that, once you have the Linux OS running, then we'll get into these details because these need some fundamentals of the networking. I can't just tell you NAT and bridged or something. So in the networking part, like uh, day three or something, I'll give you the basics of networking and what is these virtual network interfaces that we are discussing here. Even in the cloud also, we'll come into these components later. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sandeep. So that's all for today. Like uh, you just go with the details that we have just discussed. And if you are ready with the uh, operating system, Linux operating system tomorrow, we'll deep dive into different commands and different uh, user management and all that. So it will be like uh, one, two days, uh, or, or at least two to three days, we'll completely discuss on the Linux. Then we'll directly uh, jump to the cloud itself, AWS cloud, where we again get into the details of uh, virtualization techniques and VMs and all that where we create a, a free free tire uh, uh, instance where you can start using that also. So you have multiple options in uh, using these things. Okay, uh, that's all for today. If you have any doubts, you can just ask me or we can end this class today. But going forward, we will be using completely on the cloud, right? Yeah, completely on the cloud. But uh, even this also is required. For example, uh, while showing the Jenkins or uh, some other Kubernetes setup, uh, mm -hmm. I don't want you to incur the charges on the cloud, AWS cloud. I'll show you how do you set up in the local missions also, all those things. 
So that's the reason this virtual box is very important. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the day. Uh, let's meet again tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sanjay. Thank you.